Well, howdy, 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 nearly seniors. Hey, listen here. Greetings, boys and girls, and welcome to this another brand new day. You can't really see it because she's tucked down inside and my pocket's riding so low because there's a hamster in it, but there's a hamster in my pocket. And I'm quite sure there was a title screen above it, but inside of my pocket, I've got a little boogle, a boogle, 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 as I tend to call her, booga, booga, boogle. I don't know why, but I do. She's a little cutie. She is an absolute sweetheart. The, the funny thing about it is, look, in, look at her ear. See, there's a little hole in her ear. She, she could wear an earring on her ear. And she would be like one of those critters out of one of those old D&D &D magazines and stuff where they show, you know, orcs and stuff with, with earrings coming out of their big floppy ears. So she could have an earring on her big floppy ear. I mean, it would tear off, so that would be bad, but still. There's a little boogle. She's actually being very well behaved this morning. I've had to coax her out of her little house twice, and she dashed out aggressively to attack my hand each time. I pulled my hand out, of course, as soon as she came out, so that she wouldn't attack me, and so that she would become less aggressive. But she is a very aggressive little hamster, but she's an absolute sweetheart when she's not aggressive. I mean, she does bite when she gets angry or irritated or any such like that. So here, you're going to fall off my arm. So I'm gonna put little Boogle here back in her little bin cage, which is this thing next to me. I've got them next to me. So like whenever I need to, I can just reach in and grab a hamster. Here you go into your little house. Boogle's got the two story wooden house with a wooden ramp made out of little logs that leads up to her second story so she just has to go up the ramp and then she's up into the second story of her house and then but she spends most of her time downstairs in the bottom layer because it doesn't have a floor and so it's snuggled into the bedding she's got the the whole thing halfway buried so it's really really cool i may have pictures pictures try and talk clearly around my dentures they're just they're not fitting well anymore and so it's harder and harder to talk clearly around them it's Monday, so I'm going to try and call my dentist. I move slowly. I am a slow mover. But if you go back and look at my beginning videos from where I started to where I am today, I move slowly, but I move. Back then, I had bad teeth. I had them torn out. Now, I've got dentures. Yeah, I need to keep working on them to get them fit properly, but I've got dentures. When I first started, my hair and my beard were long and horrible. I didn't care about my appearance. My wife had died and I was drifting towards death. Now, I trim my hair every day. In fact, I trim my hair some more today and got it so that the longer parts were gone. I trim my bear, beard, my beard, my beard, I shave. I, I have pride in my appearance. I've thrown away the clothing of mine that didn't fit and looks awful. I'm still throwing out stuff that doesn't fit and looks bad and I'm buying new stuff. I mean, it's been, boy, it's been about a year since I bought new pants. That was the last new stuff I bought. I haven't had any money. I forgot that it's been that long. Well, I bought about three or four new pairs, so they're still all doing well. And since I rotate, not any one of them is just getting overused. So I've got pride in appearance. I've got this stuff here. I take care of my stuff. I'm, I've made an incredible, incredible step forward in recovery for after the death of my wife, taking a look at it that way. I really have. I've got a long ways to go. I'm still not out of the deep dark forest. I'm walking out of the deep dark forest and no longer walking into it. But I'm still in there, but working my way out. It's a good thing. It is a very good thing. I'm glad to be recovering and also just being aware of who I am. I mean, after all, the only reason I met my wife and got married is because I met her at work. I am an introvert. I don't like to go out into huge groups of people. I occasionally have in the past. I used to run role-playing games for groups of people at places like stores. I've played in role-playing games. I want to get back into role-playing games somehow. So I'm not afraid of groups of people. I'm just afraid of people right now, but I'm working on that. I find people frightening and exhausting. But talking to my therapist, a lot of that is the depression and just generalized anxiety that we are working through. He sees my biggest problems as depression, 
and grief. And yeah, yeah, I understand that. And I was letting my depression and my grief walk me into a deep, dark forest, but it scared me enough that I... Therapy, and I'm on my way back out. Thumbs up for that. Now I just have to take care of my health. Back when I was married, I had this spot in the upper quadrant of my abdomen. Your, your abdomen is divided into four quadrants in healthcare. There's your upper right quadrant, upper left quadrant, lower left quadrant, lower right quadrant. And so of my upper right quadrant of my abdomen, I have a pain there. But most of your organs, organs are up inside your rib cage. Your, your liver is up and tucked away up here. Your pancreas is up and tucked away up inside here. There's a little bit of it goes low, but generally the lower you go below the rib cage, the more you're just into the intestines area. The pain that I have and where I press on it is definitely down in the abdominal intestinal area. So it doesn't appear to be an organ of like, you know, pancreas and all that. And I'm not even sure it's an organ at all because my wife had said it's probably a pulled muscle. And I've got pulled muscles, pinched nerves all over my body. I mean, from my neck downward, my spine is damaged at spots. I've got numb spots on my back, which means I've got nerve damage way up here where my spine comes out of my neck, my neck, my skull. And so, yay. And so I've got pinched nerves and pulled muscles and chronic pain everywhere. So why wouldn't I have one right there? And especially since if I tighten up my abdominal muscles, the pain in that area becomes less. So it could be something horrible. It could be just a pinched nerve slash pulled muscle that with all the chronic issues and pains I've got now, who knows, it probably is. But I really should check on that now since it's hurting more and more. And really, I don't want to die horribly at any age. <laughs> that, that, that would be bad, dying horribly. I'd rather if when, not if, when I finally kick off, I'd rather it be moderately pleasant. I mean, death is not pleasant. It hurts. Your body is failing. It's dying, you know. And when your body starts to fail, it hurts. So I'm not looking forward to the pain that gets worse and worse and worse and then I die. But that's life. So hopefully it'll be a long time. I'd like to hit 74. My wife, who was very, very astute, very wise for her years, she was not, she had book learning and she was book smart, but she was very life and experience smart which was amazing considering how much life she didn't have because of her own illnesses she didn't have a lot of time to go out and do stuff as a kid because she was first undiagnosed hodgkin's lymphoma and then trying to go through high school with recovering from surgeries and chemo and radiation and yeah, it affects your brain when you're getting chemo and radiation. It's like fibro fog, except this is chemo and radiation fog. So she had to deal with that all of her life. And then after we got married and on our second child, things went to hell. Because we knew, she explained to me there was something wrong with her heart and eventually she was going to have to get heart valve surgery. And that was scary. But for two years into our marriage, everything was fine. And then as our second child, our second child, her third, was halfway born, she started to go into premature labor. And then we had to send her to Seattle to live in the hospital there in case things went bad. So she spent months at the hospital there, pregnant with premature labor, trying to hold the baby in as long as possible. Finally, the, ta the cord got tangled around the baby and they had to have an emergency C-section. C-birth, my, my apologies. You section a grapefruit, not people. After that, things went to hell. Her heart failed badly at that point and there was a desperate rush to get her healed up enough after the birth of the baby so that she could go in and have heart surgery. 
And even at then, she was dying on the table. One more day, it would have been too late. In fact, four more hours, it would have been too late. So we had to then spend the next years and years and years with her in nursing homes, adult family homes. I eventually moved in with her in an adult family home. And then we got an appointment, an appointment, an apartment in Olympia. And then we moved from Olympia to here in Shelton, living across the street from our in-laws, her sister and family. Because when she had originally had the heart surgery, we signed over the kids as guardianship over to her sister. And so her sister's family has been raising my kids since then because I couldn't raise them, she couldn't raise them. That's what we had to do. I feel regret and sadness, but after talking to my therapist, I no longer feel guilt over that. Because if you feel guilt, you should be guilty of something. But what am I guilty of? Making sure that they're fed, making sure that they have a roof over their head, making sure that they are loved by family, making sure that they are close to me and my wife. What's there to feel guilty about? I kept them out of foster care. Thumbs up on that. I've been rambling about just generally nothing at all. I went for a walk earlier this morning too. I woke up at a little bit before five. I went to bed around, good golly Miss Molly, I kept falling asleep all day yesterday. I fell asleep in the afternoon and then I fell asleep in the evening and so I went to bed around 11 o'clock-ish, ish and then woke up a little bit before five and then went for a walk. Spent about 45 minutes out on a walk and I'm gonna start taking the action cam out again on walkies because it's starting to get light enough to be able to do that. Right now it's still too dark because I got back around 6.30 and it was only starting to get light outside. Now it's pretty bright and it is 7.21 a.m. because I started late. In fact, did I say that part? Normally I like to say this. It's Monday the 26th of March and it's now 7.22 a.m. I gotta clip parts of this hair right here. It's brushing up against my ear. See that? And I didn't catch that earlier today. I was clipping this side. But my hair just, if it touches my ears, I find that so annoying. It's from my military time. <laughs> Thumbs up for that. I like longer hair. I wish I could have longer hair. My hair is not the kind of hair that grows long and looks good. Go back and look at my previous videos when I had like short shoulder length hair. Doesn't look good. Doesn't look good. It's too wavy and with my pulled back hairline. Yeah, it just looks better shorter. Thumbs up for that. What else was I going to talk about? Just as some minor things, I am both disappointed and oh, partially hopeful about Far Cry 5 with this whole microtransaction stuff where they say it's all just cosmetic but there's speed up stuff. Whenever they put up in things to speed up the game so that you can speed it up, oh, we want to give you options to speed up the game so you can spend real life money on this. They give you a reason to buy it. They're not going to give it to you if, you know, give it to you to sell. They're not going to sell it to you if they don't give you a reason to use it. So if there's reasons to buy a speed up, there's reasons to buy the speed up. They're adding unpleasant grind into the game to irritate you so that you'll buy a speed up. Microtransactions are all geared to psychologically push you toward purchasing them. So if they have a speed up thing, there's something in the game to irritate you to want to speed past it. That part bugs me. I've liked Far Cry 1. I actually liked that one almost the best. <laughs> and then I actually enjoy Far Cry 2. Far Cry 3 is awesome. I've started Far Cry 4. I like Far Cry 5, but that microtransactions bull just, nah. Uh, that's like Dead Space 3. I got Dead Space 1, I've got Dead Space 2. I have no desire to get Dead Space 3 just because the microtransactions ruin the game. I'm hoping that the microtransactions don't ruin Far Cry 5. Gosh, I was going to try and do the, a nice 
Humble Bundle advertisement. But, you know, if you could check out Humble Bundle down below there, it'd be awesome. It is a, you know, I'm partnered with them. So it'd be, you know, if you go there, I do get money for it. It's not just a, hey, there's the thing. This would be a paid thing if people went and bought things through the link in the show more down there, then you can pay me if you buy stuff through them. I actually use the service. So it's not like I'm chilling for something that I don't use. I'm subscribed to the Humble Bundle monthly. That's what I use my YouTube paycheck for. I make enough money through YouTube and my videos to pay for my Humble Bundle monthly. Thumbs up for that. But if you check them out, they donate to charity. They're still independent. It's a very good thing. So, hey, check them out. And if you happen to use my link to buy stuff, remember, you're going to be kicking some money back my way. And that's a very good thing. So thank you very, very much. Now, I have opened up 24 hours worth of comments on my community tab. I'm going to go through and thank 20 to 25 people. It's a range because even though I count in the ASL on the fingers of my left hand, I got fibro depression and brain damage from my alcoholism. I lose track even with this in front of my face. If I mispronounce your username, my sincere apologies. I'm an American English speaker. We're not good at names. I'm better than most, but... And of course, I'm not reading the comments right now. I'm going to read them all afterward. Thumbs up each one I read, answer as many as I can. But for right now, I'm just thanking you for having left a comment. Good comment, bad comment, and different comment. You took the time to leave a comment. Thank you so very, very much. So on over here, we have Wenlin Lee. Thank you so very much. Rock Goddess, greatly appreciated. Chris Jericho, thank you very, very much. Dorfin, with two Fs, thank you very, very much. Tammy Trentham, greatly appreciated. Kathy Kiscat, thank you so very much. Robloxian Ho, <laughs> heck of a name. And Flood with a uh, digit instead of an O. And then Mr. Whack is Crack, I bet it is, but thank you very, very much. And Kexer, greatly appreciated. Connor Langevin, Langevin, something like that, thank you very, very much. And Cream, C R E M E. Luke Lane, greatly appreciated. Hinge Music, thumbs up and thank you very much. Angel Mayo, ooh, M-A-J-A-O. I have no idea how to pronounce that properly. My sincere apologies. It's just a prank. Thank you very, very much. Hey, and Yuval Grossman, greatly appreciate. Good to see you in the comments. Josh F., thank you very, very much. After the Rage, thank you very, very much. Zachary Logan, greatly appreciated. Spooky Foo, <laughs> spooky with the zeros with lines through them. Very cool. King Bole. Thank you very, very much. Sam Jimenez, greatly appreciated. Once from Future Forever. Did I do a four or a three? Well, we're gonna go with four now. And then last but not least, T. Dugs, greatly appreciated. Each and every one of you, thank you so much. As stated, you get me out of my head, into the world, dealing with real people, and that is a very good thing. I am clinically depressed. I got bipolar disorder. My wife died four years ago. Her cat killed himself six months after that I lost my house to the bank I've it has not been a good last four years so thank you all very very much for coming along on this journey for leaving me comments for being here with me on this journey of exploration thumbs up and thank you so very very much and if you could check out my links down below that would be awesome I have Twitter Facebook GoFundMe Patreon.com Google Plus if you could donate to my GoFundMe campaign and people have donated thank you each of you so very very much it is greatly appreciated or if you could be on my Patreon.com patron like one of these beautiful and awesome people that would be beautiful and awesome thank you all so very very much but whether you donate to my GoFundMe campaign or your Patreon.com patron you are the reason that I am still under a roof and not homeless Thank you so very much. It is appreciated to no end. I tell you that. And of course, no, I didn't finish. It's if you cannot donate or you simply do not donate though, I do take all good wishes. I deposit them in the bank of my heart where I draw interest. So thank you very much. God bloody things. I got to call my dentist. And if you could toss me a like, I do appreciate all the positive validation I get from my existence. And if you could subscribe to the channel, that would be cool. But I would understand if you don't want to. But if you are down with it, I will do my best to keep you entertained from now until the literal end of my time. Anyway, since I turned 55 last October, and the average lifespan of an American man is 74 years with access to money and health care, so I'm probably going to die next year. Hopefully not. I like to live to at least 74. I like to live to, well, several billion, really, but I'll, I'll live with 19 more years. Well, hey, I got a reaction video coming up, got a game video coming up. If I don't fall asleep, 
I got a game video from a game channel. That's a good thing. Definitely a thumbs up. So you take care. Have a great day today. I will see you on the flip side. And that, my friend, is a very good thing. So remember, you're on the side of the road. You see the bus coming. Got your name on it. That's the death bus. Avoid.